Its ruins lie somewhere in the darkness of the ocean depths, covered in seaweed, damaged by the ravages of time. The city of Atlantis allegedly existed 12,000 years ago. Then it sank, and over centuries, people have been passing stories about it. Many think it was just a regular island, but so many legends tell about a powerful empire. Atlantis supposedly was one of the wealthiest and most fascinating cities of its time. Your breath would have been taken away if you had stepped through its central gate. Amazing decorations and towering marble statues were all over the place. The rumor has it, the entire city is under the water now. Some people believe that it's on the seabed somewhere in the Bermuda Triangle. Some even claim that an underwater pyramid in the Atlantic is somehow responsible for all those planes, people, and boats that mysteriously disappear there, and no one can track them later. The story says that in the late 1960s, there was a group of treasure hunters that came across the ruins of an ancient city. It happened during one of their diving expeditions in the Bermuda region off the coast of Miami. They spoke about the intriguing remains of the city and mentioned a glass pyramid they also stumbled upon there. They claimed it was bigger than any other pyramid, even those discovered in Egypt. Of course, those were just stories. But unusual things do happen in that area. For example, volatile water currents are a strong vortex that occurs from time to time. The Bermuda Triangle is one of the best spots for researchers to explore. They go there to study minerals, the seabed, and the Gulf Stream. They study how the ocean influences weather. The geological structure of the planet's crust deep down under the ocean floor is especially interesting. The deepest point in the Atlantic Ocean lies in the Bermuda Triangle. Researchers have done a lot of studies and drilling there to find out what lies a couple of miles beneath the seabed in that area. There's an awesome variety of seabed landforms in the Bermuda Triangle. You can hardly see anything like that anywhere else on Earth, especially if you keep in mind that this is a relatively small ocean region. Look at this shelf with shallow banks. There are also plateaus, plains, and deep sea trenches. If you believe the Bermuda Triangle is some sort of a trap, you're not wrong, considering its complex geological structure. There are a couple of groups of seamounts in the eastern and northern regions of the Triangle. They're mostly unnamed. Some of them are up to 650 feet high. At such heights, they would be considered regular hills on the surface. But by ocean standards, these so-called underwater hills are like small mountains. They're either elliptical or round. You can see that if you take a look from above. There are more seamounts in the Pacific than in the Atlantic Ocean. The underwater world in the Atlantic is less diverse than in the Pacific, unless we're talking about the Bermuda Triangle. The limestone platform that forms the bottom of the triangle is nearly 3.7 miles deep. And this entire thick layer consists of the remains of small ancient creatures. In 2019, a big group of geologists published an article where they claimed that the triangle formed as a result of strong volcanic activity. For years, people believed there were ancient long extinct volcanoes that brought the Bermuda Islands from the sea bottom. So, one theory says the Bermuda Islands formed because there were disruptions in magma flows. Pieces of ancient plates that were already in the mantle went up to the surface, and then they mixed. That's how many volcanic islands in the oceans could form. Knowing this, science fiction writers let their imagination run wild. They told stories about scary creatures and mystical cities, or islands, hidden deep down beneath all those layers. All these mysterious stories encourage people to create their own theories. In the 15th century, a well-known man named Christopher Columbus was on what would later become one of the greatest and most important expeditions ever. He was one of the first people to tell stories about a mysterious region that was later called the Bermuda Triangle. This area was first known as the Summers Isles, named after British naval hero and privateer George Summers. But Spanish explorer Juan de Bermudez discovered the island in 1505, and that's when the area got the name it has today. So, 
Columbus mentioned some pretty strange sightings within the area, starting with a light similar to that of a candle moving up and down in the distance. He immediately warned his crew and asked them to look at the light, which kept vanishing and reappearing. He spoke about stars that seemed to move around in the sky. The needle of their compass went crazy too, but the most unusual thing he claimed he had seen was an unknown glowing object coming out of the sea and shooting toward the sky. Many people these days believe there was nothing really unusual there. Those must have been lights coming from another ship or from the shore, but Bermuda intrigues us today too. It's a roughly triangular area where ships disappear without any trace. Sometimes they show up later, but empty and with not a single person on board. But more often, no one ever finds their wrecks. And it's not just ships, planes go missing too. The training sailing ship HMS Atalanta was one of the first cases in the string of mysteries of the Bermuda Triangle. The ship left a dockyard in Bermuda and headed in the direction of England back in 1880. It never reached the British Isles. It actually never even left the Bermuda region. It just went missing, and no one ever found any trace of it. Some said the ship disappeared because of a powerful storm they came across on their route. The crew members probably didn't have enough experience to handle such a situation. Back then, everyone wanted to know what had happened to the ship. How could it just disappear like that? It made headlines. People were coming up with all kinds of possible theories about what could have happened. The story continued with the coal carrier Cyclops. In 1918, it sailed off the island of Barbados, and after a couple of days, the situation repeated. The ship disappeared without a trace, along with more than 300 people on board. Three years later, in 1921, a Coast Guard on the Diamond Shoals near Cape Hatteras, North Carolina, discovered a massive commercial ship that ran aground. The guard was prepared to help people in trouble, but they had no one to save. The ship was empty. None of the passengers or crew members were there. Some theories about this accident included pirates, but no one really found out what had happened. Flight 19 turned out to be one of the most famous incidents in that area. An entire group of aircraft disappeared in the area in 1945. A further rescue expedition didn't go well either, because one of the mariners with 13 crew members also went missing. And it's not that such things only happened a long time ago. A 29-foot-long ship with 20 people on board went missing a day after it was due to arrive at Lake Worth, Florida. There were neither any records of the ship nor any distress signal. The search mission involved boats and aircraft and lasted 84 hours. The rescue team covered an area that was nearly two times the size of the entire state of Massachusetts, but still nothing. The Bermuda Triangle is a place of great mystery, but the islands are a perfect spot for travelers. It's an excellent place if you're into golfing, for example. So if you're lucky, you might easily run into some famous golf players or celebrities while there. And here's something interesting for music fans. John Lennon got inspiration for nearly 25 of his songs on one of these fascinating islands. The Bermuda Triangle is one of the most heavily traveled shipping routes in the world. Some skeptics believe that this fact solves the Bermuda Triangle mystery. Statistically, the busier the area, the higher the frequency of accidents and disappearances. While this makes sense, it's not the frequency of disappearances that's responsible for the mystery of the Bermuda Triangle. It's the lack of explanation or wreckage found. On his very first voyage to the New World in 1492, Christopher Columbus sailed through the Bermuda Triangle. Columbus reported that one night, when he was on the deck of the ship, he noticed a giant light appear in the distance, unlike anything he'd ever seen before. Columbus looked at his compass for direction, and it gave off erratic readings. You might have noticed that the Bermuda Triangle doesn't appear on any world map. This is because official institutions refuse to acknowledge that the area actually exists. No one exactly knows how many ships and planes have disappeared in the Bermuda Triangle. The rough estimate is 50 ships and 20 planes. Most of the time, the disappearances had no explanation and no wreckage has ever been left behind. When the TBF Avenger planes went missing, 
a massive search operation was conducted. Boats and planes searched the Bermuda Triangle for any signs of the aircraft. One of the boats searching was a PBM-5 Mariner airboat. The airboat took flight at 7.27 p.m. and called in a routine radio message three minutes later. Then, it was never heard from again. No trace was ever found of the rescue airboat or the five Avenger aircraft. A huge investigation was launched into the disappearance of all these vehicles, but nothing was ever discovered. The Bermuda Triangle is home to some pretty intense and unexpected weather. Storms build up quickly and unexpectedly, then disappear soon after. If you blink, you might miss it. This could explain why few distress signals are issued. Pilots and sailors never saw the weather coming. A popular theory suggests that rogue waves are responsible for the many disappearances. Rogue waves are called extreme storm waves by scientists. They occur when different weather patterns take place at the same time and cause large unexpected waves that reach up to 100 feet tall. Witnesses say that the waves look like giant walls of water. These waves could explain why ships go down fast and without leaving any trace. Just off the coast of Japan, you'll find the Bermuda Triangle of the Pacific Ocean. They call it the Devil's Triangle. Between 1950 and 1954, nine ships disappeared in this area without leaving a trace. The ship Kayo Maru 5 was sent to investigate these unexplained disappearances when it also vanished. After this incident, the Japanese authorities labeled the area as a danger zone, and sailors were encouraged to avoid it. Some people blame all disasters on the extraterrestrial paranormal activity. Others suppose it's all about raging natural phenomena. Some scientists believe the cause of anomalies is the environmental changes. Also, there's a really high concentration of methane hydrates on the bottom of the ocean in the Pacific Bermuda area. This gas tends to set off, and when it happens, bubbles start forming on the surface of the water. These gas eruptions can interrupt the ability to float and can easily sink a ship. Because of this chemical reaction, there won't be even a trace left. Underwater volcanoes are said to be another possible explanation for the Japanese Dragon's Triangle. In fact, they can take down even small islands. Luckily, nobody lives there. It's a pretty common thing in this area that some of them disappear underwater and others appear out of the blue because of seismic activity. You'll never find the Dragon's Triangle on any official map of the world, so nobody's quite sure about how large it is in reality. In July 2015, two teenagers disappeared after setting sail off the coast of Florida. There's some mystery about what the two teens were really getting up to. They told their parents that they were just going to fish, but they told their friends that they were crossing to the Bahamas. Shortly after they left, a line of thunderstorms moved towards the area, and the boys were never heard from again. A massive search was conducted, but sadly, nothing was found. One year later, the pair's boat was found off the coast of Bermuda with a broken iPhone and some personal effects left inside. One of the most popular and bizarre theories trying to solve the Bermuda Triangle mystery comes from Charles Berlitz. He insists that the area is home to the lost city of Atlantis. The missing ships and planes and malfunctioning equipment, according to him, were all caused by rays of energy let out by the special energy crystals that power Atlantis. While this sounds silly, Berlitz's theory was convincing enough that over 20 million people bought his book worldwide. Previously, the compass wouldn't work well in the Bermuda Triangle since the lines of the two poles coincided here – true north and magnetic north. But if you fall into this line, your compass will behave strangely. But the magnetic north is constantly shifting, and now it's far beyond the triangle. No legend says pirates of the last centuries operate in the Bermuda Triangle or that the Flying Dutchman makes other ships disappear. A popular theory is that ships travel to the distant past or future through a time portal in the Bermuda Triangle. Fortunately, these are all myths. Just imagine hundreds of giant tentacles reaching out to a group of ships sailing through the Bermuda Triangle. In the past centuries, they could easily sink an entire fleet, since the ships were made of wood and were lighter. Squids wrapped decks with their strong tentacles, made holes in the ship's hulls with their sharp beaks. Toothy suction cups could break the masts and tear the sails. The water was filling the holes and slowly rising to the deck. 
The ship sank in a matter of minutes. Survivors reached the shore and told everyone about huge monsters. This is how the legends of the Kraken appeared. Fortunately, now people have sonars and equipment for monitoring the sea space. They say the main reason why this place is so enigmatic must be the magnetic fields that form this ominous triangle. Ocean floor is made of rocks containing a lot of magnetite. It's more like iron. Magnetic fields react to the high concentration of magnetite on the ocean floor, which may start a sort of conflict between the two. It can often lead to various weather anomalies and, as a result, navigation issues. And naturally, any changes in the ocean floor or the Earth's magnetic fields influence the Bermuda Triangle a lot. Magnetic fields tend to shift their position, so do tectonic plates and even the continents, even though we never notice it. The skies are usually very clear there, but back in 1883, some people witnessed abnormal things in the area. Some claim to have seen large blocks of ice falling from the skies, and the crew even managed to save one as hard proof. Seems like the Bermuda Triangle has an alternate not only on Earth, but even in space. Spacecraft usually don't disappear into thin air, though, like there's no air. This anomalous area is really large and stretches right above the South Atlantic. It occupies the area from Chile to Zimbabwe and sits right at the point where Van Allen radiation belts are the closest to the surface of our planet. The Earth has two such belts, which come in handy trapping the particles that shoot in from the Sun. They do a great job protecting the Earth from radiation. The magnetic field there is lower, so it allows the Earth's radiation belt to come closer to the surface. Whenever a satellite passes by, it will be exposed to radiation, which might lead to serious damage. So no satellite can take pictures of it. The South Atlantic anomaly is part of the Earth where natural radiation just flows out of control. Still, there is little evidence that all these triangles are really dangerous. Many believe the Bermuda Triangle itself has been proven time and again to be nothing but a work of fiction. In fact, some shipwrecks, such as the Ellen Austin, gained popularity in the middle of the 20th century, while nobody even thought of drawing a triangle in the Bermuda area before that. The mystery was popularized by science fiction writers and became a common myth, while no serious research proved it any more dangerous than other parts of the world's ocean. So the crew of the Ellen Austin back in 1881 weren't even aware of the Bermuda Triangle back then, let alone afraid of it. What do you think? More than 50 ships and 20 planes have disappeared here since the middle of the 19th century. You won't find this place using an ordinary paper map, since it's not an official region of the Atlantic Ocean. It's just a small area of water in the shape of a triangle, located not far from the southeastern coast of the U.S. In the 20th century, this place became a legend. Some believe it's home to a secret base. Others are positive it's a time portal. Ships get caught in a strong storm and move to the past or the future. There's also a theory that the city of Atlantis is located right under the Bermuda Triangle. Its technologies create bursts of energy and destroy ships. Even airplanes have a chance to disappear in this area. All this has gone so far that if something strange happens in the ocean, Everyone thinks it's somehow connected with the Bermuda Triangle. The fear of the triangle has been made popular through books and movies. Directors, writers, and journalists like to use this theme. But in their works, you only see a few correct answers. You can find the truth about this place yourself if you look closely. But first, let's refute the weakest theories. Space objects, Atlantis, time travel. All these myths appeared in the middle of the 20th century. There weren't any records about mysterious phenomena before this time. People just noted that a lot of ships were sinking here. But then, one author wrote a book about Atlantis lying in the waters of the Triangle. The author didn't provide any evidence, but he described this hypothesis very convincingly. People read it and liked it. The human psyche likes to read something secret. When you learn something that no one knows about, it makes you feel special. And of course, you begin to believe in this secret. So this was one reason why the Bermuda Triangle book has become so popular. It brought the author a lot of money, and other people also wanted to enrich themselves the same way. 
Some other fantastic theories about time travel and secret bases have appeared since then. After that, people started making documentaries. All those works devoted to the mystical nature of the triangle were based not on real facts, but on theories from other books. It's impossible to find the truth in this chaos. Some people like to learn secrets, even if they're fake. But you can always find the truth if you really want. Just take any myth and try to find sources proving its reality. Most likely, you'll find nothing but non-scientific books and movies. There are also more realistic things about the triangle, but they are no less interesting. One hypothesis says that ships disappear there because of methane. Deposits of this gas are under the seabed of this region. Sometimes it releases from there and rises to the surface. As soon as methane comes into contact with water, it takes the form of giant bubbles. Then these bubbles foam the water and create large waves that flip the ships. This theory is quite real, and such a natural phenomenon exists, but not in the Bermuda Triangle. None of the numerous studies have confirmed the presence of an increased concentration of this gas here. The last methane eruption occurred here about 15,000 years ago. Another realistic theory is rogue waves. They form without storms and winds. The calm water's surface can transform into a big wave, the height of a five-story building, in three seconds. It sinks a ship and then quickly disappears. The sea is calm again, as if there were no waves at all. Some scientists believe a surface sea current colliding with a strong headwind creates this phenomenon. But some recorded cases involved no wind. Another version says the wave is born thanks to the collision of warm and cold currents. But the most exciting theory talks about kinetic vampirism that forms the waves. Under certain natural conditions, waves get the ability to exchange kinetic energy. And among all the waves, there will be the biggest, the vampire one. It absorbs the energy from all the others. When the power is accumulated, the vampire wave splashes it out. This explains the force of the impact and its sudden disappearance. All theories seem logical, but scientists still can't figure out the nature of this phenomenon. Yes, rogue waves can carry ships underwater, but not only in the Bermuda Triangle. They rarely appear in all the waters of the world's oceans. So let's move on to the next theory. Some of those who sailed through this place reported their navigation devices had become unstable. The compass and electronics broke down. The signal and radio communications were lost. We need to look at the triangle from space to find out the reason. If you use special sensors and devices, you'll see that the Earth's magnetic field is weakened above the Bermuda Triangle. This field is a shield that protects us from solar radiation. The ISS astronauts said that the triangle gets more of the sun's particles than any other part of the planet. Therefore, electronics are unstable in this area. But such failures don't occur with satellites and other space objects flying within our planet's atmosphere. Areas with a weakened magnetic field appear all over the world, and they hardly ever disrupt navigation. This means that ships and planes work stably in such conditions. But all the same, a compass doesn't work correctly in the triangle area. Could it be that some magnetic anomaly affects the navigation systems? This theory was quickly refuted. Scientists regularly check the magnetic map of this region and don't find any deviations from the norm. The reason for the unstable functioning of a compass is not an anomaly. The Bermuda Triangle is one of the few places on the planet where the true north and magnetic poles coincide. True north is the geographical north pole. The magnetic pole is constantly moving around the globe directly to the north. Sometimes these poles collide and cause such a phenomenon as agonic lines. If you fall under this line, your compass will behave strangely and won't point you to the true north. That's why so many ships disappeared in this place at the beginning of the 20th century. People used an ordinary compass. They didn't have modern navigation technologies and the misfunctioning of the compass could have led to disastrous consequences. Imagine that you're a ship's captain in, let's say, 1901. Your compass is guiding your way. You know you always need to sail north to get to land. Then you get into the Bermuda Triangle. You look at the compass and notice the arrow position has slightly changed. Now you need to move in another direction. 
this direction is the wrong one, but you don't know about it yet. You take the wrong path and end up in the Caribbean region. This area is full of tiny islands, and the seabed is not deep here. Your ship gets on a shoal. You're stuck and have no idea where you are. That's how some ships disappeared in this region. But if you had GPS, you wouldn't have lost your route and would have sailed safely to land. By the way, now, in the 21st century, you can use a compass here without problems, since the magnetic North Pole doesn't meet the true one on the territory of the Bermuda Triangle anymore. The agonic lines are somewhere else right now. But still, for some reason, ships get lost here. And now we come to the most unexpected solution to the Bermuda Triangle problem. Yes, boats sometimes disappear in this region. And the reason for this is... Water, ocean, nature, call it whatever you want. Unfortunately, ships sink all over the world. Don't be afraid of just one triangle. There are places in the Atlantic Ocean territory where more boats disappear. And the Bermuda Triangle is not even in the top 10 of them. But why does no one know about them? Well, it's because people wrote fairy tales about one particular place. One of the most popular ship routes of the Atlantic passes through the Bermuda Triangle. Can you guess where most shipwrecks occur statistically? In a place with many sailing ships. That is, in this region. The only true statement about the Bermuda Triangle is frequent storms. But even bad weather and a raging sea doesn't always sink ships. Also, hurricanes often form in the Triangle territory. The Bermuda region has high atmospheric pressure. This pressure diverts storm clouds away towards the Triangle. Strong winds and large waves can sink ships, and lightning flashes can damage planes, but this is not unique. So don't blame the Triangle for all the problems. It's a beautiful and picturesque place that attracts many tourists. Hmm, can we estimate how many ships and airplanes were lost in the Bermuda Triangle? Have their disappearances resulted from human error or weather phenomena? Let's try to find out. We have a curious story of the SS Cotopaxi. This ship vanished in 1925, traveling from Charleston, South Carolina to Havana, Cuba. It never reached its destination. Years later, in the 1980s, a wreck was found 40 miles off St. Augustine, Florida. Since specialists could not precisely determine what and where it came from, they nicknamed it Bear Wreck. It took many additional years of work done mainly by marine biologists, to identify that this ship was indeed the missing SS Cotopaxi. This was confirmed in January 2020. How did the ship just reappear? And how did it get there, since this mysterious shipwreck isn't even in the Bermuda Triangle? Now, let's see who came up with this term, Bermuda Triangle. Can you actually pinpoint the triangle on a map? No, it's not an officially recognized location either. The Bermuda Triangle does not appear on any world map. Nobody has agreed on its exact boundaries. There are only assumptions with approximations of the entire area, ranging between 500,000 and 1.5 million square miles. By all approximations, the region has a vaguely triangular shape. In 1964, an American author named Vincent Hayes Gaddis first came up with the idea when writing an article for Argosy magazine. He used the Bermuda Triangle to describe a triangular region that has destroyed hundreds of ships and planes without a trace. It is pretty hard to get the number of lost ships and planes because some ships and aircraft have gone missing without leaving a trace. Their wreckage in the region has not been recovered. But the recorded story should help us. Legends about the Bermuda Triangle date back to the 15th century, like that of the Italian explorer Christopher Columbus. When sailing through the Atlantic waters, he passed by this location in the late 1400s. In what we now know as the Bermuda Triangle, he saw a huge flame that seemed to just crash into the ocean. Later, he saw an unusual light flashing in the distance at the exact location. Like many other sailors since then, his compass had severe malfunctions. Flight 19, a Navy plane on a routine schedule back in 1945, also started the Bermuda Triangle legend. It was commanded by Lieutenant Charles Taylor, and it's recorded that he just got lost in the triangle for no reason. 
Since pilots had no GPS back then, they had to trust their compasses and keep track of how long they'd been flying in a specific direction and their speed. Shortly after completing the task, both of the compasses on board stopped working correctly. Records found after the plane's disappearance also indicate that Taylor didn't have a watch on that particular day. The initial report stated that pilot error was to blame for this unfortunate event. However, because people weren't satisfied with this outcome, it was changed to causes or reasons unknown after several reviews. One surviving pilot named Bruce Guerin suggested he went through an electronic fog while passing above the triangle, making him travel through time. In 1970, when this incident happened, he was flying his aircraft when it was surrounded by two huge clouds that formed a whirlpool and spiral. Like many others before him, he noticed that his navigation devices were malfunctioning. When he eventually made it out of those clouds, he discovered that his flight had only taken 35 minutes. It should have taken 75 in total. Since he had no other reasonable explanation for what he went through, he believed he must have been pushed forward in time. It's not only strange-looking clouds that have been seen above the Bermuda Triangle. In 2014, a pilot recalled almost colliding with a flying object that he could not identify whatsoever. Some of these strange encounters were even caught on tape. It's the case of an early 2015 flight whose passengers noticed a curious object just floating over the ocean. The pilots have yet to figure out what they actually saw back there. Okay, not all of the possible explanations have been this unusual. Oceanographers, for example, have also tried to explain why ships disappear around here. So they recently came back to one of their old theories, rogue waves. These are immense walls of water that just pop up suddenly. If multiple such waves rise simultaneously, they overlap like a wave sandwich. If one single wave can reach over 30 feet tall and happen simultaneously, it can create a rogue wave that can surpass 100 feet high. These types of waves can quickly overtake even the biggest of ships. Meteorologists came up with their own explanation too – hexagonal clouds. These unusual types of clouds can generate winds of up to 170 miles per hour. And they're pretty significant too some reaching 20 to 55 miles across. As such, waves inside these wind giants can go as high as 45 feet. The Earth's own magnetic force might also have something to do with it. Within the Bermuda Triangle, compasses point to true north, the geographic North Pole, rather than magnetic north, the shifting magnetic North Pole. Some have even explained that since these two perfectly overlap in the Bermuda Triangle, it can cause a magnetic phenomenon that could make navigational devices malfunction. It's called the agonic line. The problem is that scientists have discovered that this line moves each year. It might have passed through the Bermuda Triangle at one point, but it's now through the Gulf of Mexico. Other strange natural phenomenon found along the coast of Norway could help explain why the Bermuda Triangle has claimed so many ships. There are some deep craters there, measuring up to half a mile wide and are 150 feet deep. Scientists believe they were created by methane gas bubbles. This gas seems to be leaking from deposits hidden deep in the seabed. Once the gas reaches a certain quantity, it bursts to the surface and causes eruptions. So, do pilots and ship captains actually avoid this area today? Could this explain why there are fewer ships that get lost there nowadays? But if you've ever flown from Miami to San Juan, Puerto Rico, you probably know that's not true. As for ships, if people would avoid the Bermuda Triangle, nearly all Caribbean vacations would be spoiled. To this day, there are a lot of flights that go over the Bermuda Triangle, so it's clear nobody is avoiding it. This place is one of the most heavily traveled shipping lanes in the world. Nowadays, the Bermuda Triangle has heavy daily traffic, both by sea and air. But the Bermuda Triangle is indeed subject to tropical storms and hurricanes that happen very often. Let's also keep in mind that the Gulf Stream, a strong ocean current that causes sharp changes in local weather, passes through the Bermuda Triangle. 
Besides, the deepest point in the Atlantic Ocean, the Milwaukee Depth, is also located in the Bermuda Triangle. The Puerto Rico Trench reaches almost 27,500 feet at the Milwaukee Depth. So, if you think about it, the whole mystery is a perfect combination of human error, bad weather, and a lot of ship traffic. This was confirmed by data provided by the U.S. Coast Guard. If you look at percentages, the number of ships or planes that go missing in the Bermuda Triangle isn't different from anywhere else. Disappearances do not happen more often than in any comparable region of the Atlantic Ocean. Official statistics say around 50 ships and 20 airplanes have vanished while traveling through this region. So that's another reason why the total number is so hard to pinpoint. Nobody could describe its rescue in official records if a boat was reported missing. There were also some events that, it turns out, didn't happen at all, adding to those false reports. Like that of a plane crash back in 1937 off Daytona Beach, Florida, that local papers surprisingly revealed nothing about. It was the wealthiest and most beautiful city ever to be seen. Stepping through its central gate alone would take your breath away with its elaborate decorations and towering marble statues. Everywhere you'd look, you'd find yet another marvel of civil engineering and cultural prowess. Yes, the lost city of Atlantis was truly the pinnacle of ancient civilization. That is, if it ever existed. Since it was supposedly swallowed by the sea in its entirety, it's no wonder some curious minds linked it to the Bermuda Triangle, another subject of endless mystery in popular culture, suspected of swallowing quite a few missing planes and ships. In the late 1960s, it's said that a group of treasure hunters stumbled upon the remains of an ancient city while diving in the Bermuda Triangle off the coast of Miami. Not only did they claim to encounter some intricate-looking ruins, but they also claim that they found a glass pyramid there, larger than any other pyramid ever discovered in Egypt. A huge glass pyramid on the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean? No, that story turned out to be a hoax. Nevertheless, we do know that strange phenomena are still happening in the Bermuda Triangle, like volatile water currents or even the occasional vortex. When anyone mentions the Bermuda Islands, this mythical triangle is often the first thing that comes to mind due to all the mysterious disappearances or unexplained malfunctions. But there's a lot more to this territory than one mysterious triangle. Let me tell you about it, just in case you might want to visit. For a time after its discovery, Bermuda was briefly known as the Somers Isle, named after George Somers, a British privateer and naval hero. But the name that eventually stuck was the initial name, Bermuda, named after Juan de Bermudez, an explorer from Spain who discovered it in 1505. It's the oldest remaining British territory overseas, going back to a time before even the United Kingdom was established. The island's geographical creation is also unique. Scientists have recently discovered that the volcano that had generated this piece of land is like no other on Earth. Since it has pleasant weather almost all year, it's a great place for golfing, sporting eight world-class courses, often frequented by famous golf players or celebrities. You might just run into one by accident, if you're lucky. If you're more of a music fan, you would be interested to know that John Lennon got the inspiration for about 25 of his songs right here on this island, including classics such as Watching the Wheels, Woman, and Just Like Starting Over. Bermuda's official online travel guide even provides a Lennon-inspired itinerary, taking you from the Bermuda Botanical Gardens to the Masterworks Museum of Bermuda Art to Front Street, a district well-known for its very active nightlife. William Shakespeare himself has an interesting connection with this island. His famous play, The Tempest, a story about a shipwrecked crew that end up on a magical island where they are tormented by an old man and his servants, was initially going to be set in the Mediterranean. But after learning about a real-life shipwreck in Bermuda, Shakespeare was supposedly inspired, and so moved the setting here. The island is also home to some fascinating animal wildlife. On hot summer nights, a special insect that glows in the dark, called the Bermuda fireworm, can be found in protected bay areas. There's also a unique species of birds here, the cowhouse, 
also known as Bermuda petrels. Believed to be extinct for about 300 years, they were rediscovered back in the 1950s, and a sanctuary was built for their protection. Currently, there are about 300 of these birds in Bermuda, total. Some of the first sailors to end up on the island at times reported strange sounds coming from inland and the surrounding waters after sunset. They even described what they heard as children screaming. So, of course, they thought it must have been because of witches or sea monsters. It took a little more time and research to figure out the sounds were coming from the cowhounds. These birds emit a very specific sound that can be easily confused with distressed human noises. Just as the Netherlands are famous for their tulips and Brazil for its coffee, Bermuda is well known for, drum roll please, onions. Yes, Bermuda used to export an amazing amount of onions back in the day, and the general quality of the vegetables produced here is said to be very high. Bermudians, that's how people living in Bermuda are called, are so proud of their onion heritage that when the clock strikes 12 on New Year's, a giant-sized onion decorated with beautiful lights is dropped in St. George's Town Square to usher in a new year. This is a big part of Bermudian tradition as their onion heritage is a point of pride for the Bermudian people. The community of Bermuda is known to be tight-knit and to be very friendly and sociable. It's common to say hi to everyone on the street, even if you aren't properly introduced. Not greeting people when entering a shop or jumping into a bus is actually considered rude, so be sure to get accustomed to locals saying hello when paying a visit. Another fascinating aspect of Bermuda is its architecture. The houses are all painted in bright, zesty colors. Bermudians take very good care of their homes, even repainting them every four to five years. And they can even choose the color of their house without any limits. The roofs, however, are a completely different story. When visiting, you will notice that they are all white and terraced. Here's why. Since there is no public water system in Bermuda, people living here have to collect their own water. And that's what the roofs are for. Rainwater is collected on the roofs and then funneled into water tanks for storage and future use. That's why it's so important that the roofs remain white. Not only is it much easier to spot debris on a white surface, but the white cement also helps with sanitizing the water. What about transportation? Well, only residents can drive a car here, and only a single car is permitted per household in terms of ownership. So if your trip itinerary includes renting a car, you may want to rethink it. If riding a bus is not your preference, there's always the option of renting a scooter. You just have to remember to drive on the left side of the road. It is a British colony after all. This wonderful location is also one of the few places on Earth with pink, sandy beaches. Because it's surrounded by coral reefs that are responsible for the special red pigment, Bermuda is home to some of the most spectacularly colored beaches in the world, such as Horseshoe Bay Beach, West Whale Bay, or South Shore Park. For those interested in more of a culinary experience, Bermuda has some interesting local dishes to explore. Its geographical location and the fact that it's surrounded by water mean that most local courses are based on fish and seafood. Here you can get a nice codfish breakfast, a Bermuda fish cake, or their famous Hoppin' John. A dish made with black-eyed peas, sliced sausage, bacon or chicken, Bermuda onion of course, and some brown rice, often seasoned with garlic and thyme. They do this last one for special occasions, like in January, during the Bermuda Restaurant Weeks, a culinary festival that you'd better not miss if you love a good feast. For a place to chill with a fantastic view, Bermuda offers two historic lighthouses, each with its own delightful peculiarities. To get to Gibbs Hill Lighthouse, for example, you would have to make a long pilgrimage up 185 steps. There's no elevator to get you there, so be sure you're properly hydrated before starting the journey. The panoramic view of the ocean, however, will make up for all the effort. There is also St. David's Lighthouse, which is known as an ideal spot for whale watching. Particularly in March and April, humpback whales generally pass through these waters as they travel north to their feeding grounds in Canada. The National Museum of Bermuda also provides an array of unique experiences, such as the Dolphin Quest. Through this program, tourists have the opportunity to view, meet, and interact with dolphins in a sheltered natural ocean lagoon environment. Searching for the best hidden Instagrammable spots? Then Crystal and Fantasy Caves is the place for you. They were actually discovered by accident in 1907. 
Two young boys, Carl Gibbons and Edgar Hollis, lost their ball while playing cricket. When one of the boys went down a hole to get the ball back, he discovered this magical place full of crystal formations surrounding a beautiful lake. Crystal and Fantasy Caves attract a huge number of tourists each year, and through a number of recently constructed bridges, they are now more easily accessible. Be sure to wear comfortable shoes, though. There's lots of other geographic, historic, and cultural attractions I could talk about, but I think you get the gist. Bermuda is a lovely and vibrant island paradise that offers so much more than conspiracy theories about missing planes and lost cities. The weather is pleasant, the people are friendly, and there's so much to do on this beautiful island. So what are you waiting for? Book a flight today! <laughs> Just a suggestion, of course.